Well, turn to Psalm 27 now, and we're going to be all over the book, so don't, don't uh, fear. We'll just stay in Psalms. But um, if Jesus and the apostles use the Psalms to prepare for suffering, shouldn't we also? Shouldn't we be ready? I mean, we're going to suffer. What did Jesus say? Yea, all that live godly in Christ Jesus. Well, he said it through the apostle Paul. Will suffer persecution? Jesus said in, in Matthew 5 that we're blessed whom we're reviled and persecuted and everyone says all kinds of evil things against us. Well, how should we get ready? Well, here are just a few. If you aren't ready for suffering, here are some verses to kind of circle in your Bible when things get bad. Psalm 27 in verse 5, it says this, For in the day of trouble you'll conceal me in your tabernacle. In the secret place of your tent you'll hide me. He will lift me on a rock. Verse 6, My head will be lifted up above my enemies. And I will offer in his tent sacrifices and shouts of joy. I will sing, I will sing praises to the Lord. There's an interesting little book. It's out of print and it's very hard to find. In fact, the only copy that I had, I stood for an hour and Xeroxed it one page at a time because it's the only place I found it was in a theological library. But it's by a guy named Prothero and it's called The Psalms in Daily Life. It's an old book. But what it does, it's an interesting book. It shows the greatest figures in the history of the church which psalms meant a lot to them. And I was, I was studying this week one person, Savonarola. Savonarola was a Roman Catholic priest that seems to have come to the truth of the gospel in Florence in the 14th century, started preaching about it. Florence, do you know Florence, Italy? I mean, it was a very, very decadent place, wicked, materialistic, godless. And he started preaching to them, and he had a phenomenal five-year revival in Florence. People were burning all their costumes. They wore these mask things, kind of like Mardi Gras stuff immorality and all, and they were burning all that stuff, and they were, they were coming to worship the Lord, and he was preaching and teaching them from the Bible. But Savonarola got a little carried away, and he challenged the Catholic Church to uh, an Elijah deal, and he built an altar and said, God, send down fire if I'm really your servant. Well, God doesn't do that. He's not going to do that again until the tribulation hour when the false prophet calls down fire. And so he shouldn't have done that, but he, was, he did it anyway, and he said... And if the fire comes down, kill the Pope. You know, he's a priest of Baal. Well, he shouldn't have done that. You know, it was kind of foolish. No fire came down. So they took him in, and the historians record that the Roman Catholic Church put him on the rack, and they pulled his shoulder totally out of joint, and then they crushed it, his left one. Pulled it out, still left it attached, and then they, they systematically just crushed the bones up and kept asking him to recant, and he wouldn't recant. But they left his right hand okay because he was supposed to sign the recanting testimony that that he was wrong about the pope well instead his friend slipped in prison pieces of paper and he wrote a commentary and and look at um chapter 27 verse 5 for in the day of trouble pull crunch 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 day of trouble you got the idea it's troublesome for the day of trouble he will conceal me in his tabernacle and what the the people that witnessed his death by the way after they pulled, crunch, crunch, crunched him and let him suffer for that for a while. They tied him to the stake and slowly burned him to death. They said they used green wood so he would burn to death slowly. But they said there was a marvelous peace about him. And it says he never broke his peace, never cussed and swore and spit at them and yelled and, you know, grit his teeth together. He just died joyfully. Well, what do you think was happening? Well, this is what he was writing about. He wrote a little bit about these verses and he says... The Lord will conceal me in his tabernacle. In the secret place of his tent, he'll hide me. My head will be lifted up above my enemies. He didn't get off the stake. They didn't put his arm back in joint or set it. But I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing. I will, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Now, I doubt if any of you are going to get the pull, chump, chump, chump deal anytime soon. Me neither. But you know what? You might get into a situation where you're falsely accused or where you're mistreated or you don't get the promotion or whatever happens or in school you know they they make fun of you and just think about psalm 27 5 when you're in trouble about coming into the tent the lord has a tent ready you can just go in there and sing and rejoice and worship him and he'll take you through it that's one good verse to remember here's another one look at 31 and verse 2 here's another one that's been a perennial source of comfort for god's servants through the years incline your ear to me rescue me quickly be Thou to me a rock of strength, a stronghold to save me. Verse 3, you're my rock, you're my fortress. For thy name's sake, thou wilt lead and guide me. You will pull me out of the net, verse 4, which they have secretly laid for me. Thou art my strength 
And then what Christ said, into thy hand I commit my spirit. See how he was all ready for the day of trouble? I'm sure that these words were on Christ's heart as they spread the net for him, as they falsely accused him and tried to. Of course, he was God, so they never did trap him, but he had the comfort. Keep turning to 3723. More scriptures to prepare yourself. The day of trouble is coming, and I can promise you, young or old, you know, talkative or not, the day of trouble is coming for all of us. It's hard to live godly in Christ Jesus. The scriptures promise us. 1 Thessalonians 3, 4. While I was with you, Paul said, I told you you would suffer, and now it's happening. It, it's going to happen to all of us. But Psalm 37, another comfort verse, is verse 23. The steps of man are established by the Lord. He delights in his way. When he falls, he'll not be hurled headlong because the Lord is the one who holds his hand. You see, when we, when we fall into these temptations and these trials, the Lord always is holding our hand. It reminds me of children. You had a child with you lately? They stumble all the time. I'm always holding hands, and I have children just kind of, you know, flying through the air. But you hold on the hand, and they get back, and their feet get back on the ground, and then they start walking again, especially when they're just starting to walk. That's how we are spiritually. We're holding to the Father's hand, and he helps us to go. Keep looking at, at Psalm 37. Look at verse 32. The wicked spies on the righteous and seeks to kill him. Verse 33, the Lord will not leave him in his hand or let him be condemned when he is judged. Wait for the Lord. Keep his way. He'll exalt you to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, you'll see it. And you say, wait a minute. Does that mean you don't ever get in persecution? No, it means that the Lord, through it, always conquers and, and accomplishes his plan. So number one, the Psalms give us a beautiful insight into how to worship God through suffering, through suffering.